All right, we're going to pick up where we left off last time, which was looking at a second version of a prototype. Uh, we had already created one version of a prototype. And again, keep in mind, my goal is not to develop award-winning design sites, but to illustrate some different techniques, uh, new techniques in CSS, now that we've talked about the process of how you create a prototype. In a nutshell, if you remember, what we did to create a prototype is first we developed HTML and CSS for a template. With our HTML, we want to make sure that the common areas of the page, that is the, the, the areas that would be the same on every page, we want to make sure we got that right, HTML-wise. That is the banner, the navigation, the footer. We want to make sure we got that down because we're going to start cloning these. The CSS, we are a little less concerned about because, as you remember, the CSS is in a separate file. So if we go and want to change something, there's only one CSS file. So if that isn't perfect, well, we can, we can move on. Once we're reasonably assured that the common areas in the HTML are the same, we're going to clone that. So I'm going to take this template and I'm going to make my individual pages and I'm going to edit those individual pages to have their distinct content. I didn't actually do that in this example at the interest of time, but I did change this to say home. I did change this text to say that we would change this text for the home page and would put whatever we wanted on that. And we also changed it so that the home page uh, showed in the navigation as being the page that we're on. And we did that for three of the pages. And again, to just if you wanted to do all of them, you'd do it for all the pages. All right. Now, once we have this, and this is actually a good idea, and I'm kicking myself for not making it a requirement in the project, but we could actually go and make alternative CSS. All right. And that's a good idea. It's really nice to be able to go and say, okay, do you like it like this or do you like it like that? Because your customer may pick one part of it that they like from one prototype, one, proto one thing they like from the other. They might like the font on one, but the colors on another or the layout on, on one of them or whatever. So that's something that you can do uh, to give them alternatives. All right. Uh, it, it's sort of human nature that if you give someone a, a blank slate, a blank sheet of paper, that it's very difficult for people to sort of imagine what they want the end product to look like. But if you show people examples of things, they can easily critique it and say they like this part of this, that part of that, they don't like that part of that, or whatever. All right, so we got kind of most of the way through the second prototype, not really, but sort of, all right, in that we got the layout right. And that's what we were mainly searching for on this one. Because for this one, we used a different sort of wireframe. Instead of the wireframe being essentially stacked using the flow model, uh, where one thing simply flows on top of the, the next, or it flows underneath the previous, we changed the positioning to put uh, the navigation on the side, the content area here, a banner on the top of the page, and a footer on the bottom. All right. One thing I did that's useful, and I would suggest that uh, you could you could do it as well, is if you're trying to figure out the layout of something, make the different sections either having a different background color or having a different um, border around it or whatever. That way you can easily see where the different things start and end. 
all right? If you're trying to get the layout down and things don't look, especially if things don't look the way that you have anticipated them to, to look. If you put a border around it, you can see where one thing ends and another begins. Okay, let's review what we did here. This is a second prototype, and all we really did was we set the position. And we set the position using three different pieces in our CSS. First of all, we said position absolute. Position absolute means that the position of the elements uh, will not change and the position is with regards to the upper corner of the page. So this is 10 from the top and 10 from the left. And as we scroll off and as the top of the page scrolls up beyond the, 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 the scope of the window, the content will also scroll with it. That's what absolute means. All right? That the position is based on the top of the screen. Or, I'm sorry, the top of the page. The top left corner of the page. So as we scroll up and that top left corner, corner of the page goes up, our content goes up with it. But other than that, other than scrolling, content doesn't move. It's glued down. That's what absolute positioning means. And when we do that, we can specify a top, which we've done, a left, which we've done, on all these elements. Now, one thing where we could get into trouble is what if this was too big? In other words, what if it scrolled down? What if, for example, we added another paragraph here? Now we have those things overlapping. What could we do about that? Well, there's a lot of things we could do, but with the fixed, with the fixed positioning, we'd either have to figure out how big the maximum size is going to be and make sure that we never exceed that, or we can give a height, all right, and we can then specify what we want to do with the overflow, all right. So. Let's look up CSS overflow. So we can give an overflow property of scroll. So I can, on this section, I can give it a height of of 250 pixels and say overflow scroll. And what that will do is, even if the content exceeds that area, it gives you a scroll bar so you don't destroy the layout of the page. Questions about that? Now, let's go and let's decorate this page a little bit. Let's spend a little bit of time making it nice, and let's play around with some of the stuff that we can do uh, with this. Um, first thing I want to do is we could try giving a background gradient. Does anyone know what a gradient is? Yeah. It's just when two colors kind of merge. When two colors kind of merge. So, for example... You could go from a very light green to a dark green. Or you could go from a red to a purple.
purple to a blue. It's almost like, you know, you take and the colors sort of smear into each other. So we can look at different ways that we can create uh, gradients. Let's bring up an example of a gradient. Actually, gradient means a bunch of different things. So let's look up for color gradient. And here's an example of a color gradient. Notice we sort of go from this, I don't know what you'd call it, a, a, a dark purple or blue over to a peach color. I don't know. But you can do it with CSS. And you can create a gradient background. So let's go and let's paste this in and then let's let, let's analyze what each piece does and I can do that for anything I can do that for uh, the header for the nav for the section for the footer and so on I'm gonna do it for the header one thing someone mentioned in one of my classes is they found it easier when I put the CSS like this instead of one big line. I have to admit they're probably right. This is probably easier to read. But this is one of them things where old habits die hard. So I'll try to remember to do this going forward. This simply allows you just at, you know, without having to worry about it scrolling off the page. from the top to the bottom, this color to this color. Not 100% sure what the, what the percentages are. We'll look those up in a second. Let's save that. And there we have that as the gradient. Okay. Let's look up those percentages and see what they mean. changing them and see. Oh. Pardon me? Percent of the color present in there. Yeah, percent of the color present in there. So we could kind of jump in in the middle of the gradient. Oh. Oh, I see. So if I say 0%, let's, let's try making this 80% or a smaller number. I see. What this is saying is, is that this is the point at which that, at 27% is where that final color occurs. So in other words, the gradient happens between 0 and 27%. Does that make sense? At 20% till the end is whatever that final color was. So if I went from 40% to 60%, the gradient is just in that middle 20%. The first The bottom 40% is of that color, and the transition comes between 40 and 60%, so it's just in that little mini area right here is where the transition occurs, the gradient. That makes sense. We can make a gradient go 
from black to white if we wanted to. also change the direction that it goes. So we could say to bottom to top. We could say to top would reverse the order of it. To right. To left. And I think we can say to left top. Oops. And that does sort of a diagonal. All right. Let's go with that. serve their purpose. So we can get rid of them. white that didn't affect the links. Why is that? Well, because again, remember that the, the way that your page looks depends on two things. It depends on the browser defaults and it depends on the um, CSS that you have. There are browser defaults for links. So CSS that you have for regular text doesn't override the browser default for links. You have to write CSS specific for the browser links to make them work. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change these to Of C. 
silver. And there we have these. If you want to be sure that there's additional information about the uh, links, because again, you can tell the links are the underlying text now. That's why it's a good idea not to make any of your other text underlined. All right, we could go in and do something like uh, make the text a little bigger. So I could say font size. one point two yeah that'll make it slightly bigger than normal twenty percent bigger all right that sort of makes those stand out that those are links all right I would say we can make that wider still especially since it's on a desktop so we'll let's make the content six hundred pixels wide All right. Uh, we might want to do some effect with the mouse over, all right, if we wanted to, or give a different color for the link if it has been visited. Uh, let's do this. Um, I'm not sure if I like this or not, but I might as well show it to you. should have had a party in class today. Does anyone know why? World Wide Web has a birthday. Line through. So apparently 30 years old. Why that's not working? Visited on decoration. Well, let's try something else. Um, that's a good question. I would think it would be whatever color. Is let's do a line over line. Am I editing the right CSS file? Yes, I am. or uh, use the color. I thought you could use the text decoration on a link, but I don't know, not seeming to be working. 
Um, Yeah, it's all says for text. Maybe you can't do with the link, but I swear I've seen it before. And actually, in some cases, it looks it looks pretty cool because it's almost like a checklist. You visited this page; it's crossed off your list. So I don't know why it's not working, but we'll move on for this. All right. <coughs> the other thing I could do is I could do an on hover. I can make the size a little bigger. M again we, uh, relates to emphasis. So 1.3 M relates to 30% uh, bigger than normal. So it's already 20% bigger than normal. So if I put my mouse over it, it makes the link a little bit bigger. That could be a nice little subtle effect. All right, we can obviously go on and do stuff like this all day. Uh, the one thing I would want to do, and again, I, I think I've talked about this before, like as far as dotting the I's and crossing the T's, uh, be sure that you want the, the default fonts. If you don't want the default fonts, change them. Like I'll go in here and I will say font. Family, let's do Helvetica. Ariel and Sans Serif. The thought being that different machines have different fonts installed, so if you, uh, it will first look to try to see if Helvetica is available. If so, it will use it. Otherwise, it will use Ariel, which is Microsoft's clone of Helvetica. If that's not available either, it will use a generic sans serif file. All right, so that changed the fonts a little bit. It's always good to put a little bit of padding on things. So I'm going to go and put some padding on this. Um, we can control the space between the lines, or we can control the space here. Um, we can even control the space between the lines here um, through CSS. It's impossible to cover all the attributes and uh, that are available on CSS. So trust in the fact that if it's anything reasonable that deals with the look of the page, there's probably a CSS property for it. It's just a matter of patience and being able to find it. Okay? I, I guess that's the best way. Um, let's do that a little bit. <laughs> It's funny, it's like I know these aren't meant to be perfect pages, but I still want to spruce them up a little bit, you know. So I could say header 
H1, and I can say, uh, let's make the font size bigger. Font size uh, 2M. And let's make margin zero pixel. Let's do the same thing for the H2s, but let's make them a little smaller. between the links. Well, we could on the LI nav LI give a margin <clears throat> top of 10 pixels. And that would Space the links out. Let's do uh, with let's 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 space out the this paragraph a little bit, just for to to try some other techniques. making the space between the lines 40% more than normal. Again, it's the little things that I, I think are really important in doing this. Uh, I don't think this is necessarily an artistic masterpiece as far as CSS goes, but by tweaking some of the things a little bit, I think we've gone for a page that looks okay to a page that looks pretty good. So if you tweak a little bit more, you could take a page that looks pretty good and make it a page that looks great. So pay attention to everything. And if, there, if, if it's a visual aspect of the page, there's a chance that there is a CSS property that allows you to control it. Okay. Now, now we have two alternative pages. And we can go to a client and say, all right. Here, I've come up with a couple different designs for your website. Here's the home page one. Here's the home page two. Identical content, but total different appearance. That's, gonna, that's a big theme in web development separating the content from the appearance. All right, and it's important in so many ways. It's important when we get to mobile web development because then we can apply, take the same content and make it look a lot differently on a mobile device than on a desktop device. It's important because then we can skin the site. That is, we can make it customizable for the user. All right, for example, Canvas. You can, I'm pretty sure you can skin Canvas to some degree. You can, you can use your favorite color scheme or whatever. And that's important, uh, not just for like, well, I'm going to make it the colors that I like, but that has uh, uh, implications for people that have certain disabilities, especially people that uh, would be colorblind, obviously. They can use a color scheme that is more recognizable for them. All right, because people that are colorblind don't necessarily see in black and white. They may have trouble distinguishing two different, a couple of colors from each other, red, green, color blindness, and so on. So they could maybe pick a color scheme that didn't have those colors in it. 
or if you have certain other vision issues, or if you're viewing the page at night, all right, on your mobile device. All these things are reasons why you might want to look at the page differently. If you're going to print the page as opposed to view it on the screen, all right, all these things say, all these things imply that it's good to be able to have the same content and display it different ways, all right? And that's really what we're demonstrating here. We haven't touched the HTML since we finalized our first prototype, all right? Near as I know, we haven't touched it at all, all right, uh, once we finalize the first prototype. Everything that we've done for the differences between this and this is done strictly with CSS. Now, that's a fairly big difference. The colors are different. The layout is different. A lot of aspects of this, the fonts are different between these two pages. But to see an even bigger difference uh, and to show the potential of what you can do with CSS, there's a great site called CSS Zen Garden. And what CSS Zen Garden is, is it was a way for web designers to show how powerful CSS is. Because back in the old days, there's a lot of people that hated CSS. And that said, you know, we can do, we can, we can use other methods to get the layout we want. We can use certain HTML tags and properties to get the layout that they want. And that was true, but it drastically limited the flexibility. What they've done on this site is to show just how dramatic the flexibility is, what the capabilities of CSS are. Because they've taken this one page, and again, we can notice a few pieces of content on it. The title, CSS Zen Garden. The beauty of CSS design. A demonstration of what can be accomplished. The road to enlightenment. What is this all about? Participation and so on. We can take this one page and we can view that same page formatted a whole bunch of different ways that are wildly different. This, for example, is the exact same HTML page. In fact, let's do this. So that we can go All right, this page and this page are the exact same page. Notice they have the same content. This says CSS Zen Garden, except it's written upside down, not upside down really, but it's written vertically. Here it's written horizontally. The beauty of CSS design, the beauty of CSS design. This is the identical HTML. If you don't believe it, we can view it. We can view the page source of this one and view the page source of this one. And if we look and switch between them, the only thing that changes is the style sheet and they did throw in a script here. But if we look at the, 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 the guts of the HTML, body, Section, header, body, section, header, identical HTML. And yet the appearance of it is drastically different. We can pick another example. That again is a different version of this page. So we can dramatically change the, 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 the way that the page looks with the same content. And that's something that is very valuable for us. All right? So, so far we've seen two different ways that we can lay out our page. All right? Really, we did some stuff with the color and stuff with the backgrounds and all that. But really, 
the key difference that I was trying to illustrate is two different layouts. One uses a, the flow layout, where things are just stacked on top of each other. The other uses an absolute layout, where things are going, uh, or things are put in a certain precise position. Okay? Now, I'm going to take this example, and I think I have enough time to tweak it to use what's called a fixed layout. Okay? A fixed layout. So fixed layout works like this. Notice that again, this is an absolute layout, so everything is positioned with the corner of the page. So as the corner of the page goes up, the content goes up. We're going to choose to position the navigation so that it stays constant, not with relation to the top of the page, but with relation to the top of the window. All right? So let's go and do that. Let me copy my prototype. And I'm going to go in, I'm going to make a couple changes to the CSS. I'm going to I'm going to put the header and the footer to the left. So I'm going to put it header to footer to the left. And we'll keep the nav what it is, but I'm going to change it where it says position absolute to position fixed. So now the page looks like this. But notice that as I scroll the page, the navigation stays put. I'm going to move the navigation to the top of the page, because I think as I'm looking at it, I think that would be better. So I'll do top 10, left 10. But notice it's not position absolute, it's position fixed. Absolute is, is, is absolute to the top of the page. Fixed is fixed to the top of the window. So that navigation stays there as I scroll. And that's a really cool thing to do with navigation, right? Especially if you have long pages. Because if you have long pages, Uh, what's the quickest way to make this page long? I'll just I'll put in a really big height here. All right. If you have a really long page and you have to scroll a lot, then... then the navigation stays fixed. All right? So that's a pretty cool technique that you can do. Now, in the old days, some browsers didn't support fixed. All right? But here's the good news. When it didn't support fixed, it treated fixed the same as absolute, which actually wasn't that bad, because then the only difference is you didn't get the scrolling behavior you wanted, but it's not like the page broke. That's the interesting thing about HTML and CSS compared to other languages. Other languages, if you use something that the language doesn't understand, it blows up. HTML and CSS, it sort of tries to do something. And it's not going to totally blow up 
it just might not do exactly what you want it to do. Now, later on when we look at HTML5 and other things, we'll see that there's tools available that help you see if a certain feature is supported by a certain browser or not. Right now, we'll just test this on different browsers. So I can go and open up. Yeah, whatever browser this is. And view it. And it works in that browser. We can open up Firefox. And it's going to work in that browser. We can open up the other Microsoft one. I know one's Internet Explorer and the other is Edge. Yeah, I don't remember which is which. But it works in both. It works in both Microsofts and Firefox and Google Chrome. We can also test on Safari and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? Now, the flow layout that we did in the first example probably is better for mobile devices. Both the fixed and the absolute layout tend to have problems on smaller screens. But here's the good news. If you really want the page to look a certain way on the desktop, you can always apply a different style sheet if you go to a mobile device and have it act and look differently. All right? So while the flow and, and what we're going to study next week, the couple of, of uh, or actually not next week, but Thursday and next week. No, next week is spring break. Yeah. What we're going to study Thursday and then when we get back from spring break, uh, they might work a little better on mobile devices, but remember that you have a lot of choices when it comes to mobile devices. Getting one CSS that works for everyone isn't the only solution. You can apply multiple CSSs or even have multiple websites. So, again, if there's a specific look that you want, sometimes absolute and fixed will give you that look on the desktop, and then you can deal with mobile uh, separately. All right, that's all I had. I will go unlock the lab, then I'll come back here to get my files, and then I'll be back over.